I'm Dr. Mora, and this is the Coaching Hive Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Coaching Hive Podcast. November has been such a big month for so many. I am part of an entrepreneur group that is working fearlessly on launching a new set of workshops. There are some amazing topics, and I love the diversity that entrepreneurship allows. Here at the Coaching Hive, I'm preparing to launch a new workshop called Finding Time in the In-Between. No magic wands, no extra hours, no overwhelm are required to take action on your coaching business in December. If that sounds intriguing, I'd love to have you join me. Just send me a quick DM saying I'm in or an email to mora at coachinghive.com and I'll send you the details ASAP. Now, what does all of this have to do with today's episode of the Coaching Hive podcast? I'm glad you asked. November is all about measuring progress. So far, we discussed the concept of a holistic view of progress in episode 40. And then in episode 41, we took time to talk about the fact that you are enough just as you are. There are some podcast episodes that I come back to time and again. You know, when the entrepreneurial journey gets tough, you go back to those episodes that mean something to you. I have a handful of them from a variety of entrepreneurs. These are the ones that make you feel good, that make you remember what you're doing and the fact that you're doing the right thing. So I hope that episode 41 will be one of those reminders for you to keep working, keep moving forward, stay motivated, and knowing that you are enough just as you are. Now, that's kind of where we've been in the past few weeks with the Coaching Hive podcast, but where am I headed for today's episode? You might be asking. And a funny thing happened. So I hope you'll allow me a little bit of a divergence here. I had an idea. I was so excited to record the concept for you. And then I got distracted and I couldn't remember what I wanted to share. We've all been there. In fact, if I don't write it down, I probably won't remember that idea two days from now. I'm so focused in the moment and I rely on my lists. How about you? What that means, what all of this means is that I sat down and realized that I needed a new idea and I realized that we shouldn't make things more difficult than they need to be. And that's kind of when the light bulb went on. This led me down a path that I want to share with you today. So are you ready for today's topic? Here it is, plain and simple. Remember that measurement is not about judgment. In fact, I would encourage you to look at measurement of progress as a tool, much like you would look at a Phillips head screwdriver, a lawnmower, or a drill as a tool. It's the same as a spatula, a pot, or a mixer in your kitchen, the same as a hairdryer, mirror, or brush in your bathroom. These are all tools. Now, if the lawnmower doesn't work in the way you expect, do you berate the lawnmower for underperforming? Probably not. You might fuss a little bit, but you would look pretty silly standing on your lawn telling the lawnmower that you were disappointed in its performance or ability to trim the grass to a specific height, right? Yeah, you would look pretty silly. So why would you berate yourself or judge yourself when the progress that you're making toward your plans isn't exactly what you hoped for. Let me ask you a question and you'll need what you learned in last week's episode to answer. Are you still enough even when the measurement doesn't pan out the way you hoped? Yes, you are enough. That is definitive. That doesn't mean there isn't room for growth, but please, if you find yourself judging your work harshly, ask what it will accomplish. Chances are it will make you feel less than you might feel that imposter syndrome creep in, and you may even find yourself questioning your ability to make the concept, the plan, or the business component successful. 
This is not what measuring progress is all about. Measuring progress is simply a tool in your toolbox to help you navigate when to make adjustments, tweaks, shifts in your approach. Let me walk you through a couple of concrete examples so that you can really get the picture here. I want to keep this episode short for you so that you can take time and really think about how you approach your measurement of progress and how you can make a few little shifts so that you view measuring progress as a true tool. Okay, so let's start with let's start with a few examples here. One of the concepts that I talk about with all coaching hype coaches is the idea of making progress-driven learning decisions. So for my first example, what if you choose a training that you think will be really beneficial for your business? Perhaps it's a training on marketing. Maybe it is a new coaching tool that you'd like to integrate, or maybe it's a course on effective planning. You're excited. You're ready to take the course. You get halfway through the course and you feel like this is still a solid progress-driven learning decision. You're starting to implement what you've learned and you can see the benefits. You're making meaningful progress in your business, but then the course progresses and suddenly you're lost. You realize that maybe this wasn't the investment you were hoping for and that the progress-driven learning decision you made isn't turning out to be quite the boon you were hoping for for your business. And you, you have two choices here. You can fuss at yourself for the lack of progress and the decision that might be costing you time and money and energy, or you can use it as a learning experience. You can remind yourself that you have learned something. Perhaps it is that you have a better idea of what you're looking for now. And maybe you have a new set of questions that you ask yourself before investing in a learning opportunity. When you take this approach to measuring progress, when you think about it as a learning experience, in this case, you're using the measurement as a tool instead of a way to berate or belittle your initial decision. Because when you view it as a learning experience, you can continue to move forward instead of stop in your tracks. And isn't that what measuring progress is all about? Making progress? It's about moving forward, right? Not stopping in our tracks. Okay, let's look at this from a client-driven example or viewpoint. Many of our clients are looking to make a change. That's just fact. They come to us because they want to fill in the blank. It might be get more sleep. Maybe it's pursue a more passion-driven work opportunity. Perhaps it's to achieve a healthier weight. Regardless of what it is, in each case, they are setting a SMART goal that aligns with the path of change that they've chosen. Now, one week, your client comes for their session and they are smiling from ear to ear. And you know, without asking that their measurement of progress, well, it measured up. They met the goal. They're excited. But the next week is kind of the opposite story. They share that they messed up and they didn't come close to the planned goal. That's a harsh self-judgment, and it's likely to slow or stop the change journey. Instead, if the client can reframe and use the measurement tool as just a tool meant to help make adjustments, like a wrench can help adjust the tightness of a nut, then it's viewed more impartially. There isn't any inherent worth in the tool itself. It's just simply a step along the path to the ultimate vision. My question for you here is what do you think about this concept of measuring progress being a tool, just like a screwdriver, a blender, a hairdryer, or a wrench? Can you see yourself making this kind of mental shift? Measurement is not about judgment. It's not saying anything about your personal worth, your intentions, or your future success. It's simply a snapshot into the right now. 
and it can open doors to future possibilities. I like to think about it like one of those traditional Polaroid snapshots. You know, you take the picture and the, the Polaroid would come out and you would wave it around in the air for a few minutes. I know I'm dating myself. And then you could see the picture come into focus. That's what it's like. That's what measuring progress is like. It's like that Polaroid picture as you're waving it in the air, waiting for it to finish developing and it comes into focus. Measuring progress is a tool that helps us to become more focused and how to move forward. It's not about whether someone or something is good or bad, wrong or right. It is simply about this is where we're at. And now we can make adjustments to think about how to take the next step forward. This is a different way of thinking about progress and a different way of thinking about measuring progress, but it aligns beautifully with what we've talked about the last two weeks, thinking about the fact that you are enough. We don't need that judgment to be part of the progress measurement. And we also need to remember that measuring progress is a holistic concept. It's not just a number. It's not just one little thing. It's a conglomeration of things. And when we look at it more holistically, we are going to be naturally predisposed to view progress measurement as a tool. I don't know about you, but in my toolbox, in the garage, I don't assign worth to the screwdriver, to the pliers, to the hammer, to the mallet, to the drill, to the saw. They are simply tools. They are to be used to make a change more effective. What if you view measuring progress in the same way? I promised you a short episode today to give you time to rest and digest, to think about this concept of measuring progress being simply a tool. So now take that time and think about a time you measured progress. Maybe it was recently, maybe it's something that you know is coming up in the next week or two. Maybe it's a little bit more distant in the past and think about how you viewed measuring progress in that instance, in that situation. Was it as a judgment or was it simply as a neutral tool that allows you to make change? As always. I hope that this podcast has given you something to think about, something to practice and something to explore. I always look forward to your DMs, your comments, your questions, and your reviews of this podcast on your favorite podcast provider. And until next time, have a happy, safe, and healthy week.